Welcome to the learning session on pericardial diseases. We will cover the basics of pericardial diseases, as well as their epidemiology, types, etiology, signs and symptoms, diagnoses, and management. The word pericardium is derived from the ancient Greek words peri, which means around, and cardion, which means heart. The pericardium is a tough double-layered fibroelastic sac that protects the heart by keeping it in position and preventing the heart from overfilling with blood and from being damaged from infections. It contains a pericardial cavity containing a serous fluid called the pericardial fluid. It protects the heart from any kind of external shock. The pericardium is not essential, and its removal causes little measurable effect on the heart's performance. The most common disorder of the pericardium is pericarditis, which is the inflammation of the pericardium. Pericardial diseases account for 0.2% of all hospital admissions for cardiovascular diseases. In North America and Western Europe, approximately 5% of the patients with non-ischemic chest pain are known to have pericardial diseases. Though their etiology is unknown, pericardial diseases in 80 to 90% of the cases are due to viral infections. Recurrent pericarditis is seen in 15 to 20% of people with pericarditis. Next, we will look at the types of pericardial diseases. The types of pericardial disease are pericarditis, which may be acute pericarditis that is sudden onset of inflammation, which starts after the triggering illness. Subacute pericarditis, inflammation starts after a few weeks or months after the triggering illness. And third, chronic pericarditis, where the inflammation lasts longer than three months. Other disorders of the pericardium include pericardial effusion, which is an increase of fluid in the pericardial space, which stops the heart from filling blood properly. Fibrosis of the pericardium that ISV scarring and thickening of the pericardium, constrictive pericarditis or thickening of the fluid in the pericardial space, which becomes fibrous and causes the layers of the pericardium to stick together. Let us now cover the etiology of the pericardial diseases. The given table describes the etiology of pericardial diseases. It includes infections, neoplasm, cardiac, and autoimmune causes. The various infections that cause pericardial diseases include viral, bacterial, mycoplasma, fungal, and parasitic. Their neoplasm causes include metastatic like lung or breast cancer, Hodgkin's disease, leukemia, and melanoma. The primary causes include rhabdomyosarcoma, teratoma, fibroma, lipoma, and angioma. Their cardiac causes include early infarction pericarditis, myocarditis, and dissecting aortic aneurysm. Their autoimmune causes include rheumatic diseases, Wegner's granulomatosis, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis. The given table describes some of the etiology of pericardial diseases. It includes drugs, metabolic, trauma, and radiation. The drugs that cause pericardial diseases are isoniazid, hydralazine, phenytoin, and penicillin. Their metabolic causes are hypothyroidism, uremia, and ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Within trauma, either blunt or penetrating and iatrogenic cause the pericardial diseases. Studies have shown that radiation is also one of the etiologies of pericardial diseases. Moving on, we will look at the pathophysiology of pericardial diseases. Any etiology initiates an inflammatory response with the influx of neutrophils and various chemical mediators of inflammation. This results in a change in the permeability of the pericardial vascularity and causes pericarditis and edema. The edema ultimately affects the heart and causes pain. Now, we will look at the signs and symptoms of pericarditis. Signs and symptoms of pericarditis depending on the type of pericarditis, its signs and symptoms include some or all of the following. Sharp chest pain, shortness of breath, heart palpitations, low-grade fever, fatigue, and tiredness. Let us now discuss the symptoms, diagnosis, and management of the most common pericardial diseases. In the next lesson, we will start with the acute pericarditis.